Yo, what's going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to round two of the Buffalo vs. Rochester 5v5 Team War. Um, $500 in the pot in total. Um, the team that wins will win $250 and the team that loses will lose $250. $50 ahead um, to settle a long lasting rivalry between the two cities of Buffalo and Rochester. Who are the uh, Who has the best players, the most competitive player base and this is what we are uh, set to find out. Obviously, if you guys saw round one, Colin from Team Buffalo won round one against Brian from Crush Cards on his Adventure Punk Zombie deck. Um, Swordsville took that one 2 1. And now we have Colin Goodrich on the left here versus the one and only Chan the Man. Chandler, you guys have seen him on uh, Crush Cards video several times, I imagine. Um, yeah, uh, super awesome dude and uh, really exciting match for you guys here. So, Colin, obviously on Swordsville. And uh, Chandler is on uh, the Adventurer Despia deck. Um, he's been on this deck for a little while. I know in the past he also played uh, like Sun Avalon and stuff like that. And uh, I think he's known for playing Altergeist as well in the past. Um, but, uh, you know, he's stepping up to the plate to see if he can take down the Colossus that is C. Goody. And uh, we'll just see how this one plays out. So Colin does win die roll here um, and just goes into Chi Xing. Sinister, that is the monster that is extremely glared out right now in the bottom right, um, or the bottom left. I talked about this in the first match. There was a huge glare, little time to set up, and I couldn't really fix it um, without taking a lot more time for the setup. Um, so that is Sinister Sovereign. So we'll get the double draw in the search there, opting to use Qi Zhao as Chainlink 3 and the others as Chainlinks 2 and 1. You want to search before you draw, especially though know, you can like figure out that the opponent doesn't have Ash at this point. It's pretty obvious, so... You don't have to worry about um, chain blocking Chi Zhao from Ash, and if they have Valor Imperm, they have Valor Imperm, you can't stop that uh, with chain blocking anyways. So he'll draw two, set the black out, and pass. I see DD Crow in hand, which is already pretty good going into this matchup. Um, you know, game one, like going first, it's like, it's whatever, um, but you can at least hit Albions and stuff out of the graveyard uh, to prevent, um, you know, end phase searches. Um, or just simply holding it for Branded and Red um, or Banishment targets. Always a very high impact card against this deck. Um, although it can be countered by Tri Brigade Mercurier. That's why some people opting to play the Foolish Return or Blizzard um, as a non-monster effect way to out the Branded and Red. It's a very specific form of interaction. You need to have it not lose to Branded Loss, not lose to um, you know Mercurier, etc., etc. But we're going to see him go ahead and activate opening here. Opening is going to go ahead and discard another opening to go ahead and summon out Despian Tragedy. Um, obviously, you don't want to use Sinister there on the summon of the Tragedy just to burn 12 because that will trigger Tragedy's effect. Being banished by a card effect, go ahead and search. Um, so obviously no reason to fire off the, uh, the Sinister there. The Blackout is known. And that's pretty much, I mean, obviously the, everything on field is known at this point. Um, the set is obviously blackout. It's just how many hand traps has he drawn up to this point? Um, so we're going to see Chandler normal summon the Alibur. Attempt effect. We'll see Colin respond with Chi Xiao, banishing a Vishuda, I think. Um, and then attempting to negate the Alibur. You know, you got to put him on half brand infusion. So it's kind of like Alistair, right? You always want to negate the Alibur if you can with like a Veiler or an Imperm. Um, but Chandler will have uh, arguably one of the most powerful cards in the game, maybe one of the most powerful cards like ever. Super polymerization, um, extremely good here. Be able to not only dodge the Chi Zhao on the Alibur if he fuses away with it, which I imagine he will, um, but it's also going to just remove an interruption off the opponent's field for the free um, at the cost of a discard, discarding the branded in red. Um, so he will opt to fuse away. Looks like the tragedy the Alibur, and the Qi Zhao for the Despian Proskenian, which is a card um, I want to say isn't like... And there's me putting my hand over the other cards to, to get rid of the glare for a moment so you can see what cards are there. Um, yeah, the Proskenian is a card that I feel like we've seen fall out of favor in some Despian extra decks, um, but is coming in clutch here. Needs a Despian monster, I believe, plus a light and a dark. So Qi Zhao being a light, Alibur being a dark. And then you have the tragedy. Um, and this, not to mention, this card is actually kind of insane here since it can just reborn, I think, a fusion synchro Ixies or Link, like out of the opponent's grave. Um, just kind of nuts. Um, looks like also on the summon of the Proskinian, we're going to see the Sinister 
um, attempt to banish the uh, Proskinian and burn for 12. And then resolving other chain links here, obviously, you're going to get the effect of tragedy um, to go ahead and search. And I'm just going to go and actually pull up Proskinian really fast. I was looking at this earlier because this card is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's a quick effect. So chaining to the Sinister um, to summon back out the Qi Zhao. Um, you know, use it or lose it, right? But the one scary thing here is that uh, since the Alibur did get to go ahead and search Branded Fusion because it dodged the Qi Zhao, um, and he did get the search off of the Tragedy, he was able to get access to um, the Ad Libitum, and, you know, conveniently enough for our, our uh, Despia player here, um, you know, Ad Lib can revive those banished fusions, and, you know, here Proskinian is now banished um, via the opponent. Um, he's also going to chain the Sinister to the Branded Fusion to banish and burn for 12, because you might as well use it at this point. You're probably not going to get, you know, really any value out of um, Sinister any more past this point if you don't hit the Branded Fusion, so you might as well just banish it and burn 12. That way they can't add it back, uh, or well, not add it back, but reset it with the Tragedy, its other graveyard effect. Um, and it looks like he's going to go ahead and fuse for Albion here, I would imagine. And, um, yeah, so DD Crow in the hand of our Sword Soul player. And again, this is, you know, traditional, like, 3v3 uh, Iron Man fashion, so there are players on either side of um, both people playing right now, um, you know, offering input and sort of coaching in that sense. Um, obviously, yeah. So that's just, like, one thing that, like, even, like, 3v3s, um, you know, you're, you're allowed to do that. So it's, like, that similar fashion, um, you know, just to get other uh, ideas and inputs. Um, from your teammates um, because it is like a team effort at the end of the day So it looks like in response to the Albion he will chain the DD Crow banishing the Albaz um, and Also pretty important here because that's going to limit Greatly what he is able to fusion summon here because you know for mirror Jade you need fallen of Albaz um, But other monsters in the extra deck that aren't as good don't need fallen of Albaz so it's it's gonna basically kind of force him to make something a little suboptimal here um because i mean you're already not in the best position after getting hit with a super poly so you might as well try to make it so they can't like get access to arguably their best extra deck monster mirror jade it's you know gonna make it much easier for them to go through your board secure them follow-up and make it much harder for you to play next turn if you can even play to begin with um, and he will be able to fuse four to the despian quartus and there's that ad lib coming in clutch to bring back that conveniently banished Proskenian. And um, he will use Quartus in the main phase. That's going to zero everything out. That isn't a level later higher fusion. So the Qi Zhao included the Sinister. And it looks like on the attack declaration, we're going to see um, the Sword Soul Blackout activate, targeting the Sinister, obviously. And you don't want to go ahead and target the Quartus here because if that gets destroyed, it can go ahead and summon out a Fallen of Albaz from the deck, which will allow him to fuse. He does have the discard in hand. Um, and that'll give him access to Mirror Jade. So only be able to destroy the Qi Zhao because Brandon Opening will banish itself to protect all the fusions. Um, and yeah, that's 32, 25, and 25, which is game. Um, yeah, just getting OTK'd right through all of that interruption. Um, all because Super Poly, man. Really, really powerful card. Chandler doing a very good job there, um, being able to break the board and go for a game. And uh, as we head into game two, quick shout out to Imperium Duelist and TCG Player. Check out the links and the affiliate stuff in the uh, description uh, if you guys want to support the channel outside of just watching videos on a regular basis. Also a reminder, there is a giveaway going on right now um, on the Libermancer versus Sword Soul video, giving away three common ashes. Um, just a really good generic staple to have, and I know some people don't have that card, especially with the common being as pricey as it is. So if you want to enter a chance to win, um, definitely check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so we're going to see Sword Soul go first here in Game 2. Interestingly enough, Colin lost his Game 1 in Match 1, um, and he was able to bring it back. So let's see if that's the case here. I'm going to go for Moi, reveal Longyun, getting Token, and then resolving the Vessel here um, to go ahead and dump Ashina, add Adhara. So this gives him a little bit of a backup plan here. If he wants to be able to play through Nibiru, um, already past the Collector checkpoint here. Um, also... One other thing that can be sort of like, um, I guess, uh, assumed 
is that uh, you know both uh, Brian and Chandler were on adventurer decks um, so odds are you know we can assume from the information that we have available to us that they, they probably aren't siding token collector so at this point your biggest fear really is just going to be Nibiru um, so that kind of makes like playing or like that's like one last thing you have to play around as a sword soul player uh, which is nice so we're gonna see him go ahead and activate long Yun, discard um, and then make the Baron on the fifth summon burn for 12 so now at this point pretty much safe from Nibiru he's gonna need a second hand trap if he wants to fully crack the board and then we're gonna see him activate Ashina there summon out Vashuda Adara add back the Ashina and then synchro for a Chi Zhao here and then uh, chain link two Moi chain link one Chi Zhao or it might be the other way around here we might see him go ahead and actually search and yep right said before um, you know deck then before you draw always an important thing it, it doesn't like seem like it makes too much of a, of a difference sometimes but like oftentimes it can right now he doesn't have to worry about drawing blackout and draws into an anti-spell fragrance i believe um and something speaking of anti-spell fragrance something funny happens here um you guys will see and if you watch the stream um it was a little a bit of controversy in quotes um, I really wouldn't call it controversy because I, I don't think it really matters at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, so that's it for his turn. He's going to set three. And Chandler goes standby main. He says, okay to main, but my friend Adam, who is on the right side of my friend Colin, starts saying like, no, 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 no. Don't say okay to main. You have something in standby phase. And Chandler said, you know what? It's fine. You can go back to standby phase because he obviously had the anti-spell to flip up. Um, which obviously with Chandler having five spells in hand makes a difference, you know. He had every right to say, no, you said main phase, and they would have had to go with it, but, you know, he said, let him take it back, you know, flip with the anti-spell, but I personally don't think it mattered, because I think Chandler has Dark Lua and Droplets in hand, and in my personal opinion, I don't think there's any reason why you don't start Dark Ruler, um, and at that point, you just chain the anti-spell to that. It's obviously not stopping the Dark Ruler, but it's stopping any other engine spells he has in his hand. Sure, he can chain the Droplet to it, doesn't really make a difference either, um, you know, but he doesn't really have anything to stop the anti spell from resolving, which is stopping at least, you know, three or four cards in his hand from being remotely useful. Um, you can't use Brandon Red, can't use Brandon Fusion, can't use the Pot of Prosperity that was in the hand, no Rite of Aramis here because they're not quick plays. Um, so even if he did have to use it in the main phase, I don't think it mattered, especially since Colin already had Hash in hand. Should he have, you know, not okayed the main phase? Was that a mistake? Absolutely, I'm not defending it. Um, but it's just, it's just, yeah, it is what it is. Always, uh, always stand by phase or draw phase or anti spells, kids. Don't wait till the main phase because obviously you don't have priority to activate it first. Um, but we're gonna see an end phase blackout. We're also gonna see Chi Zhao in the end phase um, activate its effect, banishing blackout to negate sinister, um, just to get that token in play so the tennies are live next turn. Um, obviously, if you're gonna use blackout to clear your own monk. Um, so that makes it so you can't use Tenny stuff and if you can't use Tenny stuff in your next turn If you don't have sword soul cards already in hand, it's gonna make it like a lot slower to play But doing that little blackout interaction there with Chi Zhao um, is gonna allow him to get that Vashuda on board Thanks to the Ashina and that's just gonna be game right there 28 29 and 15 especially with him already being at 68 so we're into game three and uh, We're gonna see Chandler opt to go first here very very solid opening hand for Colin. I think it was Ash Imperm uh, Vishuda, Emergence, and Ecclesia. So a really stacked hand for going second. Um, and yeah, obviously uh, game three here. Very, very important game. Um, you know, Chandler needs to win this one to stop the 2-0 lead for Buffalo. So we're going to see him start with right. Very, very strong card here, getting access to the token. And then it looks like he already had the Griffin Rider in hand. Spilling cards everywhere, it happens. Um... Yeah, so uh, TC Boo also in the main deck at this point. Not super surprising to see either. Um, although it's a card I've seen less and less of in uh, Despian decks, but it's still also something I see every now and then. I feel like I should be seeing it more than I do, but then maybe I'm just not watching that many Despian replays. Um, card's absolutely insane, and Sword Soul definitely folds to it. Um, but my friend Colin knows that. Um, I remember a lot of time we were preparing for YCS Hartford. That was one of the things that was constantly on his mind. It was Nib token collector and tc boo if you could beat all those cards with sword soul you're pretty much unstoppable at the end of the day um so we're gonna see him opening out the aliber pitching a fallen of albaz it's gonna trade with an imperm um because you know you have to imperm the aliber and it does force the griffin rider there um which is nice because now the brand of fusion is not protected um it does put him on have two hand traps and this time around colin did have it um 
yeah, so the Griffin Rider being added back since he didn't use the monster effect search of Fateful, so getting the Griffin Rider back in hand for next turn. So we can just activate it in response to something like Vashuda here. So he does have an Omni Negate on board, but Vashuda is a hell of a card to be able to chain to because now the Vashuda is just going to trade again with the Griffin Rider, which is really strong considering that he has Ecclesia and Emergence in hand. Um, looking pretty rough here. Colin did have some really strong hand traps this time around. Um, not only did they have the Imperm um, for the Albert, which obviously was protected by Griffin Rider, but also on top of that, the Ash to stop. Like, literally the perfect hand trap you could have asked for to hit the Branded Fusion. Um, Ash Imperm against Despia is always going to be strong. Um, even, like, no matter what build you're playing against, like... No, maybe except for Predator Plant Despia. I would say that's an exception. Um, so we're going to see the Vashuda activate... Uh, attempt to bounce the Griffin Rider, or might have attempt to bounce the token, uh, but probably the Griffin Rider though. Um, and that's going to be chained, um, obviously to negate the Vashuda. And then we're going to see Ecclesia get Ash, and then we're going to see Emergence go in here to go ahead and grab Taya. Effective Taya to go ahead and banish token. And then I can't remember here if Colin is actually going to end up using the Emergence uh, secret effect um, to manipulate a level of a sword soul monster or a worm monster on the field um, if he wants to go for a yazi line to get more removal while also getting access to more engine cards like moyi and uh etc etc because if you can clear the um the token right now that's going to clear obviously the token it'll take the draco back with it and that's one less card you have to deal with so he will use the level manipulation effect on the taya making a level three Allowing him to synchro for 7, and then Taya effect is going to go ahead and send an Ashina, and then Ashina effect to go ahead and summon out an Adara, and then he's going to link the Adara into another Monk, and then Adara effect add back the Ashina, so now making sure he has a, a card in hand to reveal, since I think the 6 card was another Ecclesia, which is pretty okay, but if you already have, you know, one Ecclesia, the other Ecclesia is not really going to do you too much unless you have to, like, normal the Ecclesia and use it as a tuner body, um, but we will see him pop the token, and then uh, the Yaz is going to bring out the Moyi, um, and then Moe effect, reveal the Ashina, go into Chi Zhao, gonna go ahead and search Long Yun, and then draw, since we know the Ash has already been forced out, so we can deck then and then draw, drawing into Emergence, which is pretty nice. Long Yun, discard the Ashina, get token, and at this point, um, yeah, I can see this just being game here, especially now with him being at 68, and the Chenging up by, I think, 300, since there is three banished cards currently. Um, and the Aluber is very, very weak. Um, the defense on Aluber is um, not very much. It is only, it's zero defense. So yeah, um, yeah, just attack over with one of the monks and then swing in with everything else. And that is going to be game. And uh, with all that being said, we will see Buffalo take the 2-0 lead. Um, Colin defeating Brian in round one, defeating Chandler here in round two. So Team Rochester will only have three players left while Team Buffalo still has its full roster left. Um, and stay tuned for the next match. We're going to see Tavin Gab Gabsby, I think. I could be butchering his last name versus Colin. So stay tuned for that. And last but not least, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members for our Twitter 0226, Pony Start, Cadillacs 84, Justin Lamb, and HGH Cyber. Thank you guys so much as always for your extremely kind and generous support of the channel.